Ren's Money Game Part 3 is finally out. I've reacted to the first one and the second one. Look, there are no rules in the comment section below except to be polite. Okay, so if you disagree with someone, you can wreck them with an argument. Don't don't be insulting people. And by the way, say hi to Diva. So I'd like to see what you guys have to say. If you agree, disagree with some things, or maybe I interpret something wrong. Listen, it's the first time I listen to this. I'm probably going to interpret something wrong with my own biases. I admit that. Either way, you're welcome to give your thoughts below. We good, we good. Okay. This kind of feels like a evil mastermind playing the, on the piano, you know? I mean, I'm not sure why, but every time I think of a piano, I think of an evil mastermind. I like what, what the camera is doing. There's a lot of transitions, clean transitions and everything. Oh, what's going on here? Well, the, this one here is clearly Ren. This, this guy here. I just know how he walks at this point. <laughs> I've watched enough videos. No, I, I can kind of see his face through the thing. Let's see if I'm right. Who's the other guy, though? Boom, Ren. Clean. He looks sharp. One years old and his first words were my my gimme two years old he was one were one years one year old and he was saying my mind give me this is a very common thing that a lot of babies say now sorry I don't want to break this down too early but it raises the question of are we born greedy or is that something that we just learn that quickly because society is that greedy? It's one of those like, is this thing innate or is it something that uh, we see and then once we start using words, we kind of finally can vocalize how greedy we are. Um, kids like don't want to share either. I didn't want to share my toys, but I didn't want to share mine because I had some friends that would uh, <laughs> ruin my toys and break them, and then I wouldn't get new ones, so that's why I wasn't sharing. Walking, three years old, walking quickly. Four years old, he was running round the pavements of his city. Five years old, and his daddy told him, Listen here, son, you gotta learn to be a man. A man he works for what he wants. Six years old, and he's reading, writing, top of the bunch. And when he's seven, his progression made him student number one. Eight years old, and he's praised for unusual grades. Nine, his parents paid for private school to nurture the flame. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, he ascends and ascends. His daddy tells him, son, money is the means to all ends. Fourteen, solving complex mathematic equations at fifteen, IQ a hundred and fifty. Oh, I like what's going on here as he's going through the ages the instrumental isn't the same right now the pianos are kicking in and things are building up the instruments are coming through one by one slowly though but it's building up and, I, and i'm assuming at some point there's going to be something that happens in this um kid's life that relates to being greedy i we already have a foreshadowing at at age one when when the kid was like oh i this is mine give me give, whatever he said right um but i can see how 
this is going to unfold poetically, right? And with a climax in the music. At least that's how I feel so far. 50s to elevate 16. Sorry, about let me go back a bit so I don't miss what you just said there. 14 solving complex mathematical equations at 15 IQ 150 still elevating 16 he develops complex software code that detects weaknesses in cybersecurity protocols 17 and he sells his vision keeping the share not yet an adult but he's practically a millionaire 18 and his daddy tells him now you're a man this world don't give a damn about you so take all that you can 19 he turns a profit stocks and shares investing Product 20 double down deposits 21 his income rockets 22 he learns the truth is just an obstacle to wealth If you manipulate Okay, first of all I want to point out the fact that Even though I'm listening to the story I want you guys to also pay attention to the way that he's delivering this He's on beat He's not just like using an instrumental to say this story He still has his rhymes He has his inner rhymes coming He's working his syllables there at the end there almost around where i paused maybe like three seconds before the instrumental kind of like sped up and he sped up his delivery with that too so he's very in tune with the musical side as well while he's saying this story which basically at this point this guy is smart gifted he was nurtured he got everything i guess um um and he has his father which has been mentioned a few times now but his mom hasn't i'm not sure if she's gonna come in after but his father's like telling him hey you know you have to get whatever you need to get it's it's not this is what life is you know you get as many resources as you can um because no one else is gonna fight for those resources apart from you um and you have to do that for your family whatever the reason is that's what his dad is teaching him and he made it right he made he he made that code and then which was a good thing right you know, he solved some cybersecurity threat. And then he, from there, I guess maybe one of Ren's points that he might be saying, I'm not sure if he's saying this, I'm just spitballing right now. One of Ren's points might be, hey, like from there, you should be happy. You're already a millionaire at that age. You're good. But I'm assuming he's going to say that this guy's going to get more and more greedy. Everything is going well for him. Um, and he keeps striving for more, which I wouldn't say it's necessarily a fault to strive for more because I we, we get into that argument again, is that human nature to like if for example, right? Say I achieve something. I I achieve ten thousand subscribers on my YouTube, which I'm pretty close to by the way. Well, I'm not gonna just stop there even though some other people that are like maybe two thousand subscribers would be very happy with 10,000, right? I I'm going to want more. I'm going to want more. I'm going to want more because I want to grow. I want to get better at what I do, all that stuff, right? So I don't know if it's exactly a bad thing to always strive for more, but maybe when it comes to taking re resources that are helping other people at that point, there's a, um, a point that Ren is making, which is there has to be a limit on how much you take because we don't have unlimited resources on earth, right? We need to help everyone. Um, I'm I'm jumping ahead by a lot here. We'll see what, what Ren's actual point is. Sorry, well, I'm just spitballing. The data, then the lie will sell itself. 23 One lie. second, I missed that too. Income rockets, 22, he learns the truth is just an obstacle to wealth. If you manipulate the data, then the lie will sell itself. 23, a life of luxury, crystal and cocaine. 24, he makes the Forbes list, they're applauding his name. 25, and his daddy tells him, listen here, son, while you're sitting in that palace, that don't mean that you won. 26, a business shift, he switches business to arms. He's 27, dealing nuclear and shells in Iran. 28, inside the Senate, money bought him a seat. Okay, I see what the point is. He's saying he's not going to stop at anything if it means he's getting money, right? So all the good things that he did when he was earlier, when he was a kid, right? At 17, I think that's when he did the, the cybersecurity thing. That was a good thing, right? No one got hurt from it. He actually helped the world. But he's saying now that he got a taste of that, of the money, the power, all that stuff that comes with success... This kid wants more and he's being pushed on to do it by his father. His, his father's still whispering things that this kid is like taking his gospel and being like, okay, so I don't have it all. 
I need more. How do I get more faster? And then at that point, when you when you start thinking like that, then you're like, do I have to follow all the rules? Do I have to morally... Am I morally obliged to, to not do anything bad for money? What's stopping me um, if I don't get caught? All these questions arise, right? And at this point, he's doing things that are actually bad for the world as a whole, but good for him individually. Um, but it's so heavily skewed towards all the bad he's causing that Ren's point here is probably there's a you, you can't be doing that much bad in the world just for money to come to one person which is you right that's where the greed is coming in um if i mean i'm not i don't disagree with this at all right um but also of course it's a extreme situation because that's exactly what he's trying to do he's trying to make this very extreme so you get his point right he's not going to tell you about some normal kid's life um i get that 29 a roll of council in the president was okay. in iran 28 inside the senate money bought him a seat he's 29 a roll of council in the president's suite now he's 30 his daddy says you're losing the race you're just a servant to the king not even in second place 31 yeah. a big maneuver for his daddy's approval moving imports over borders from the exports out of cuba 32 moving grams growing kilos to tons he's 33 filling well grams kilos tons I, I like how he kept the theme there when he was talking about pushing drugs it's it's greed right it's greed at this point this kid is taking everything his dad's saying and of course his dad's probably a huge uh part of his life because he keeps mentioning it and he's just doing what it, whatever he has to do to get his dad's approval but at the same time he is losing the approval of a lot of other people right that he is hurting or people that are close to the people that he's hurting um but he doesn't care about any of that he his circle is so small it's him his dad his close family and his money that's his kingdom and he's not thinking of anything outside of that which is again messed up but it's the truth that's that's just how it is Moving imports over borders from the exports out of Cuba. 32 moving grams, growing kilos to tons. He's 33 filling warehouses with powder and guns. 34 turf war with nobody to stop it. Blind eye from the popo inside of his pocket. Thirty-five. He gets the call. I'm sorry, son. But it's your father. Had a heart attack. I'm sorry, he's gone. Thirty-six. Getting pissed up. Abusing his product. Thirty-seven. Eyes glazed. This position demonic. Thirty-eight. With a prostitute. A moment of passion. Heating up a silver spoon and then chasing the dragon. Thirty. Silver. He's referring to drugs again, right? The silver spoon. Chasing the dragon. Abusing his product. 37. Eyes glazed. This position demonic. 38. With a prostitute. A moment of passion. Heating up a silver spoon and then chasing the dragon. 39. Getting reckless and hungry for power. Daddy's words are still driving him to kill and devour. Makes a move against the cartel, but the strategy's flawed. They retaliate and leave him in a hospital ward. A bullet buried in his vertebra and one in his leg. The doctor sighs and says I don't think you'll be walking again fuck yeah there's there's a line that you don't cross he's saying there's well there's a line that you shouldn't cross is what Ryan is saying and he's also saying most people that get in a position where they can snowball their money like that and get more and more they're going to do it um and then you know once you cross the line one time, it's easier to do it again after and do it a bit more. Whatever way you internalize it within doesn't matter. Um, it just, you're internalizing it. You got your own reasons. People tell themselves tons of like coping mechanisms that they have where they're like, oh no, I'm doing this because my family, blah, blah, blah. But like, if you're hurting 10 other families to marginally make your own family's life better right this guy is, is already a millionaire at 17 so he doesn't need to be pushing drugs he doesn't need to to be helping around he doesn't with nuclear shells and all like he, he doesn't need to do any of that 
he doesn't need to be in the Senate, he doesn't need to buy the police. All of the, all of the rest of this is him crossing the line, and then once you cross the line, you cross it more and more and more and more, right? Until this happens, and it bites you in the ass. But it doesn't bite most people in the ass, right? There's a lot of rich, powerful people that know, like, hey, I'm, I'm good to go now. And that have hurt a lot of people along the way. Let me tell you a story about a boy named Jimmy. He was 40 and he cursed the words, my, my, gimme. 41, he wasn't walking. 42, not walking quickly. 43, never running round the pavements of his city. 44, inside a palace with a mountain of gold. But wow, I, I like how that went full circle. Um, by the way, I was I was about to get goosebumps there. I shut that shit down this time. I'm sorry. We're going to read that part back because I feel like something's going to happen here. But I wanted to point out the fact that he's back on square one. But now he has all this money. But he can't walk and he has to learn to walk again. If he can, right? Which is, by the way, what Ren was talking about at the start of the story at 2 and 3. You know, he learned to walk, then he walked very quickly. So it's funny how... This whole cycle is happening again this time, but this time he has done something that's unfixable for himself, right? Um, that one mistake ruins everything. 40, and he cursed the words, my, my, gimme. 41, he wasn't walking. 42, not walking quickly. 43, never running round the pavements of his city. Beautiful. 44, put. inside a palace with a mountain of gold. But those riches turn to rubble when perspective evolves. Weighing heavy on his conscience is There's the value goosebumps. of gold. Lamborghini for a life, trading money for souls. Jimmy followed the code inside the land of the free. Put your hand inside the cookie jar, take more than you need. And his example is exaggerated versions of me. And it's a version of him. And it's a version of she, and it's a version of you. There's no escaping the blame. The way we live is parasitic. Fuck the money and fame. Oh Cut the music. God. Oh my god, goosebumps all over, man. This isn't entertainment. Wow. This is real life. The way we live is lunacy, community, it declines. Hyperpolarized, always fighting, then we divide. Truth is less important than the money that we designed. Money's an invention. Politics from our invention. They all come from people's ideas. Did I mention? Borders an invention. Law and order fuel the tension. It leads to people killing each other. My solution? I like how you shut down the music there to, to actually push exactly what he's saying he's like okay i gave it to you in a form of an exaggerated story which poetically the way that he he structured that story together even musically where bad things happened the, the sound changed and then when there was suspense the piano was like boom 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 like there's a lot going on musically there's a lot going on with the way he wrote this with how it circles back to the start but now his this guy's uh jimmy was it jimmy why does he? Why did he say this guy's name is Jimmy? Has he talked about him before? I can't remember. Now, now I'm like, wait, did I miss something? Someone tell me. I, I bet I missed something. Why would he give us this guy's name for no reason? It has to mean something. Anyway, the way that he structured this was so, so like beautifully put, beautifully done, synced with the song. The. The way that you can feel what he's saying too with the eye contact he made in the video beautiful now he's gonna go with the solution which is the last a minute and a half so i'm, I'm wondering what solution you have because i'm pretty sure most of us none of us have a full solution how do you fix this
Everything is subject to change. We could build utopias if individuals were taught to use their brains. But if we teach kids in schools to always be sheep and put themselves before the herd if there's more money for me, then there's no future I see where the humans survive with parasites inside a petri dish with cannibal minds. Mold will grow upon the surface and consumes till it dies. And our fate could be the same without this story to the wise. I love how he compares that to a petri dish. For, for those that don't know, um, my line of education is all in biology, so, so it makes a lot of sense. A lot of microbial cultures, um, they only have so much space for, where they can expand to, right? And it's bacteria, it's microbes, whatever you want, to, microorganisms, whatever it is, it's going to find a space where it can live and reproduce, and it's going to take all the resources up until the point where their population is so big that it either needs to expand or there's not enough resources and then they kill each other or maybe they don't kill each other maybe they just die off right we're talking about microbes but i'm also thinking of humans because that's the analogy he's using here um and that whole thing happens because of that need to cop your resources and not share and not um come up with a smarter way um to reap the benefits of the resources in a renewable fashion in a way that you recycle it there's a lot that goes on to that right um but i guess what i'm trying to say is it's really we aren't like microbes we aren't all that stuck in a petri dish we're way smarter right we have a brain we can think of things we can think of ways to not run out of resources um but if we're too stuck being greedy for them right now and we fight for it and all that happens, that just doesn't give us the time or doesn't give us the environment for our minds to come up with a solution in the future, right? If we're too busy in the moment right now trying to get the most resources that we can. Um, and you you see this everywhere. There's two wars going on now, which is crazy. Um you wouldn't think that that would be a thing in 2023 um genocides are still happening in africa hunger when we have enough food to feed the whole world all these things are all happening for no reason apart from the greed um and the fact another thing that he he talked about is this whole thing is happening and it's being passed down from generation to generation and someone has to break out of it right so this kid here obviously influenced by his dad from and then his dad was influenced by who previous generation previous generation right um the same thing happens with political beliefs religious beliefs all these things always get passed down from generation to generation um and that's maybe one of those things that promotes us not wanting to change um, not wanting to change our laws or borders all the things that ren is explaining here uh because we've been just raised to to see things that way so it's really hard to break out of it but we're smart enough to break out of it if we really want to right so that's his point we're not mindless microorganisms in a petri dish but we're acting like it 45. Jimmy comes home out of the rain, soaking wet upon a wheelchair, drinking again. He is everything he wants, he is fortune and fame. He's a fortunate fool with an unfortunate fate, with a 45 cal- Fortunate fool with an unfortunate fate? I, I like how he did that, and then he said the 40 caliber, right? The way that he's constructing his rhymes as well for to the for to the for to the right it's very there's inner rhymes and then the rhyme at the end he is everything he wants he is fortune and fame he's a fortunate fool with an unfortunate fate with a 45 caliber aimed at his brain 45 a fitting number because his age is the same here's the words of wow. his father it's such a damn shame then he presses on the trigger of a money game. Wow. Wow. 
that's probably my favorite one because this is Ren going into his storytelling, right? When Ren's on his storytelling, he really knows how to drive a point with a story.